Halfway between the historic and picturesque market town of Horsham and the village of Pease Pottage in Sussex lay the lily beds, an area of St. Leonard's Forest where lilies of the valley grow wild. The poisonous plants are said to have grown there ever since the Frankish hermit, St. Leonard, slaughtered a menacing dragon that was terrorizing a nearby settlement in the 6th century. The saint was wounded during the long battle, and it is believed that wherever his blood fell, lilies of the valley sprang up, creating the lily beds. God rewarded the saint's bravery by granting him a favor. St. Leonard asked that adders in the forest should never sting again, and that nightingales, which had disrupted the saint's prayers, should not sing there again. Male nightingales are attracted to the flowers by their scent, leading them to seek out potential mates in the forest of St. Leonard. Adders, according to the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle, have been seen in Sussex in great numbers since the 8th century. Various sources cite that in Athelweird's 10th century Latin translation of the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle, he entered for the year 770 that monstrous serpents were seen in the country of the southern Angles, that is called Sussex. Perceived as profoundly unlucky creatures, most likely due to a Saxon association between serpents and the devil, Dragons are feared and vilified amongst the people. One can understand the fascination and adoration with which the Christian population holds St. Leonard in, given his fervent slaying of the devil incarnate, a protector of good fortune and an example of righteous and noble action. St. Leonard's dragon was said to be England's last, but the saint was not as successful as he appeared when three local villagers in 1614 claimed to have sighted a strange and monstrous serpent in the forest. Soon after, rumours spread of monstrous serpentine creatures prowling amongst the woodland, the tales surviving well into the 19th century. This tract, published in August of 1614, and titled True and Wonderful, recounts the story in great description. The headline reads, A discourse relating a strange and monstrous serpent or dragon lately discovered and yet living, to the greatest annoyance and diverse slaughters of both men and cattle by his strong and violent poison. Beginning with a foreboding message, the pamphlet claims the forest maintains unwholesome shades and overgrown hollows where the serpent is thought to be bred. Terrorizing a local hamlet by the name of Faygate and haunting the borders of Horsham, the creature leaves in his wake a slimy reeking trail not unlike that of a snail. The odour itself is so offensive that to breathe it in is deadly. The dragon is reputed to be nine feet in length, shaped like the axle tree of a cart, thick about the middle and smaller at both ends. It has black scales on its back and red ones on its belly. Its feet are large, allowing it to run as fast as a man, its face proud. At the sight of men or cattle, the creature raises its neck upright and appears to listen or look about with great arrogancy. On either side of the creature are two great bunches, big as footballs, that some think may in time grow to become wings. The author of the pamphlet writes that he hopes the creature is destroyed before any such mutation can occur. Equipped with poisonous glands, the dragon is said to cast his venom about four rod from him rod being an old unit of length, four rods equating to approximately 20 meters. A man and a woman taking a walk in the forest were set upon by the dragon, and afterwards found dead, poisoned and swollen, but not devoured. One man, presumably incensed at the relentless savagery of the beast, set out to destroy it, taking two mastiffs with him. The dogs were both killed by the creature, and the man was said to be glad to return with haste to preserve his own life. Like the man and woman before, the dogs were not preyed upon and left whole. It is thought that the creature's quarry is rabbit, for he often frequents a coney warren, which had apparently become scanty and depleted of life. The pamphlet then provides the names of three witnesses who had personally seen the serpent, besides an attested many others. Their names are John Steele, Christopher Holder, and a widow woman dwelling near Faygate. How reliable are these witnesses? People were generally more superstitious and suggestible in the past, particularly in small communities, where science was not developed enough to bring reason and understanding to many phenomena. 
One theory suggests that dragons may have actually been old remnants of dinosaurs, with iguanodon bones found at Tilgate Forest, not too far away from St. Leonard's. This, however, doesn't explain the eyewitness accounts of a living, breathing, gargantuan, poison-hawking lizard. A more plausible explanation can be found in the idea that smugglers, who operated heavily in St. Leonard's Forest during the 17th and 18th centuries, circulated rumours concerning a fearsome dragon to keep people away from their nefarious activities. Another source puts forward that the 1614 pamphlet was actually the beginnings of silly season journalism, its author resorting to sensationalised fantastical and captivating stories when there wasn't much real news to report on in the summer months. At this time in history, the serpent is an allegory of the corruption of the legal profession or of drunkards, the author pushing the exposure of serpentine sins that live amongst us, comparing the white band of scales about the neck of the creature to the white Tiffany about the neck of one of those tugging galley slaves of damnation, the writer is clearly using this article as a vehicle for his own political agenda, embellished with heaps of creative license. A final consideration on this story has us reckoning with the fact that there is no evidence St. Leonard visited Sussex in his lifetime. Dr. Andrew Board wrote in the 16th century that the nightingales of the forest didn't sing because they had disturbed the devotions of a forest hermit. It's a tenuous link, but not the only written historical connection. Vocal tradition has done its job wonderfully with the story of the dragon of St. Leonard's Forest. Both a song and a rhyme dedicated to the memory of the Sussex serpents have been recorded in writing. I should howl outright to tell of the rest, how this poorer maid was overpressed. Therefore quickly come and read for your penny. Come, my hearts, tis as good a bargain as e'er you had any. Here's no Sussex serpent to fright you here in my bundle nor was it ever printed for the widow Trundle. Here the adders never sting, nor the nightingales sing. Is the story of the dragon of St. Leonard's Forest an allegory of Christian justice, delivered upon a manifestation of the devil, or is it merely an invention of smugglers to keep strangers away from their affairs? Perhaps it is an embellishment of an ancient story perpetuated by a bored, frustrated writer, or a misinterpretation or wishful attribution to a saint alien to the forests of Sussex. What do you think? I'd be interested to read your comments below. As always, thank you for joining me on this instalment of British folklore, myths and legends. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to like, share and subscribe. To vote on what you'd like to see us cover in our next video, head over to our Facebook page, link provided in the description. I'll see you next time.